Hi everyone, welcome back to the hashtag C Arthritis uh, event here at the Canadian Rheumatology Association and Allied Health Professions Association 2018 annual meeting. It's great to have you back um, in the hot bird seat, uh, which I told her would be very chill and relaxed. So it's not, not hot, it's chill. Um, is Dr. Netta Amiri. We are really happy to have you here, Dr. Amiri. Um, Dr. Amiri is with the UBC Faculty of Medicine in the Division of Rheumatology, and her expertise is pregnancy and rheumatic diseases. And I happen to know there are a lot of women who have arthritis. Two out of three who develop some type of arthritis are women, so I'm sure you're kept uh, pretty busy. You're young and fit, and I, I'm sure you're in it for the long haul. <laughs> um, and uh, we're really happy that you came. Thank Thanks you so having. much. Um, we just want, our audience really just wants to sort of pick your brain a little bit. Talk to you about the field in which you're expert. I understand you're on one of the expert panels here at this yes. year's meeting. Um, the whole field of research in women who are pregnant with rheumatic disease, I think has, has exploded actually. We see more research today than we've ever seen. From your perspective, what do you think are some of the really exciting things that have come out of that research for, for women who are either contemplating pregnancy and their partner for that matter, um, women who are pregnant and, and women who deliver. Sure. So what are some of the key things that you've seen over the last few years? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the field of rheumatology has really revolutionized over the past 20 years and in the same time period and even more so in the past five to ten years, um, specifically when it comes to women who are planning to have women and they have underlying rheumatic diseases, the attitude has changed as well. I see this especially in patients with lupus yeah. where they used to be even discouraged at times to have, um, have babies. So told they, they shouldn't exactly, think about it. Yeah. Exactly, because it was thought that you know, if you have lupus and if you have a baby, this could be dangerous for both the mom and the baby. But we're learning more and you know, having an underlying rheumatic disease, having lupus, that doesn't exclude you from being able to be a mom. But we, we're learning from the research that's coming forward that uh, there, there's a right time and a right place. And that's really kind of my role <clears throat> and what I've been trying to do in Vancouver in terms of the research. <clears throat> Excuse me. So mother to baby yeah. in um, the States and their Canadian counterparts, they do great work uh, here in Vancouver. Dr. Mary Devera yeah. is one of the researchers who has this as an area of interest. It's actually an area of interest to me and myself and a couple other rheumatologists from across Canada. We're hoping to make a Canadian pregnancy and rheumatic diseases like registry. a network. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, we're learning a lot more about <clears throat> rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, but there's still a lot that needs to be learned. Well, what about vasculitis? What about yeah. other rheumatic diseases? So pregnancy with those diseases. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the focus has really been um, on pregnancy and lupus, because, and I think rightly so. It's a disease that, uh, where the onset is you know, girls in their late teens, early 20s, right at that time when you're starting to think about starting a family. Exactly. What do women, so what should, what's the conversation they should have with their rheumatologist? Yeah. Um, so sometimes I joke and I tell my patients that even before your husband or your partner knows that you're uh, wanting to have a baby, you should you know speak with your rheumatologist. <laughs> um, and it just and that's what I try to tell my colleagues locally as well. So um, I'm the director of the pregnancy and rheumatic yes. diseases clinic here. We call it the Predict Clinic. Um, so we try to have the uh, patients meet with me before they're pregnant. So we talk about, well, is this a good time? Is your disease in remission? What are the medications that you're taking? And what is the impact of disease on your health? Do you have any, and, um, any organ involvement, mm -hmm. kidneys, lungs, brain? Because these are all important. And then we try to optimize their medication, optimize their health status. Because the research that has come out suggests that if you have minimal disease activity or disease remission going into the pregnancy that really makes your odds of having a successful, uneventful pregnancy the best. That so. makes all kinds of sense. So it's kind of like, kind of enjoy, enjoy replacement. It's get everything around the joint strong and healthy as exactly. possible before you go for the, exactly. so it's the same kind of principle. Exactly. 
Um, and would that be true not just in lupus but also in women, for example, with ru rheumatoid arthritis or sorry? So the same kind of principle exactly. applies. It, it, like you said, we know more about some diseases compared to the others, yeah. but it, it is a concept that we apply, that I apply to um, all of the diseases. So I'm looking for minimal disease activity, hopefully remission, six to 12 months prior to a woman contemplating pregnancy yeah. Yeah. on medications that are compatible with pregnancy. I'm gonna ask you a question, which I know a lot of our Facebook and Twitter live viewers are, are thinking um, or wanting to ask you, and, and that is, can I stay on my medicine? Can I, do I have to go off everything? What have we learned about medication use in pregnancy? Because I think most of us, even those of us who aren't pregnant um, and you know, clearly past the age of, of being able to conceive a child, but we worry about the medication piece, not just for us, but for our, our baby in yeah, utero. Yeah, so how, what, what do you, what do you say to women who ask you that question okay. today? So that's part of the visit that I have with every woman, and I go through all of their medications, both over-the-counter and prescription medication. What I've observed is moms are so selfless, mm -hmm. right? They, they want to do the best for their child even before that child is born, and they want to give that child the best chance of being healthy. And there's, like you said, that um, factor of fear, and yeah. what is this medication going to do? So there are medications that we know are, that are safe, and I go through that data with my patients. Medications that we're not 100% sure about, and there are medications that are clearly contraindicated. For example, methotrexate. Sure. You know, there's like there's no negotiation. Yeah. There. But um, for pa for medications that we know that are safe, for example, hydroxychloroquine in lupus, especially, absolutely safe in pregnancy and breastfeeding. It's important for patients to also continue taking medications that is keeping their disease in control. Because right. my, my fear is that a patient who's not sure about the effect of the medication on their child goes off the medication, then they have a flare during that pregnancy, then they have to go on high dose prednisone, and that's much worse. So the risk, so in other words, the risk of flare or the actual flare in pregnancy, the, the risk it poses is actually greater than the risk of someone maintaining a medication and keeping all of that down low, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. yeah, and um, exactly. And yeah. then patients need to remember that everyone, um, like doesn't matter if they're healthy, they have rheumatoid arthritis, yeah. they start with a background risk population risk. So when it comes to miscarriage, that's around 10 to 15%, depending on what study you look, and you're looking at malformations. Yeah. So that's around three to 5%. Yeah. So when they look at studies and medication use in studies, they look to see if we see a pattern of deformities associated with them, yeah. that medication. Yeah. And what, so, um, a thumb missing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, if, if it's persistent, if you always see that with, uh, with, with the medication. And so I go through all that data, but it's important yeah. to know that if the medication is compatible with pregnancy and breastfeeding, and if it's keeping your disease in control, it's important to maintain it because having a flare during pregnancy, that's yeah, people not like good, to avoid not that. good. Exactly. When you think about your own area of research, and you look and if you close your eyes uh, and you dream the big dream, mm -hmm. for for pregnancy and rheumatic diseases in particular, what's the next advance? What's the next best sort of beautiful sunset that people can see, or you know, beautiful moment that you? that you envision for people who are, who are living with these diseases and, and, um, and going through that whole pregnancy process, pre, during, and, and post? Um, it's hard to talk about that without talking about rheumatology as a field, right? Because right? as is the theme of this year's uh, precision, precision medicine, personalized medicine. So the vision of rheumatology is to have personalized medicine. So instead of having to go through trial and error with right. medication with each patient and try and find out whether they'll respond to that medication or not, knowing exactly based on your genetics what will work for you and try to minimize side effects. And then the vision beyond that is to be able to achieve disease remission with me minimal medication or even no medication. Right. So then if we can translate that into the pregnancy 
Absolutely, that's the vision. Yeah. What I'm hoping to achieve as part of my career in the next five, 10, 20 years is, as we talked about, establish that network of, look, let's look at all patients with rheumatic diseases who are pregnant, going pregnancy, and see how their disease affects their pregnancy, how does pregnancy affect their disease, and what sort of outcomes can we tell about these tell patients that they can expect going into pregnancy and what sort of experience they can expect. So that's what underlies this, the need to create this registry. Exactly. So I'm turning to our audience. If you're someone, you're a woman, uh, you want to be pregnant, you want are, are pregnant, you've gone through pregnancy, would you sign up for a registry? That's a really good question that we can ask our audience. Just send us your yes or no um, and even explain why um, behind each of those uh, two answers. I mean, we're hoping the answer is yes. Maybe explain in our last sort of minute here, um, Dr. Amiri, what is a registry? What does that entail for our community member? So registries um, in Canada, and in, um, especially in rheumatic disease, have been quite important. So um, I can't talk about all registries because yeah. they're all slightly different, yeah. but so for the pregnancy registry that we're working on is called Caprice, Canadian Pregnancy and Rheumatic Diseases Consortium. And basically, um, I do visits with my patient at every visit, and that at every visit that they come first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, as part of the routine medical care that we're doing, examining their joints, listening to their heart and lungs, we also ask them questions that will go to our registry. So. So um, those, those are data points, let's exactly. say, and those get put into a big file folder somewhere. Exactly. Okay. So then, because um, it's hard to make predictions based on one or two patients, but then if you have 100 patients, 500 patients, 1,000 patients, then you can start to see patterns. Well, oh, look at that. All patients who yeah. have rheumatoid arthritis who got pregnant, look at that. Their disease activity gets better. So some of the registries, they, they um, expect patients to... Um, fill out questionnaire so every time you kind of go in as part of your visit you also fill out well how are you feeling so the health assessment questionnaire right. patients may be familiar or with. the hack exactly yeah. the hack um, so we, you might have to like fill it sometimes you know it's a little bit extra work yeah as part of patients but it's quite empowering also that you're contributing to this body of knowledge and based on your experience your your friends and colleagues or you know your children down the line might benefit from that. Yeah, so I think exciting. this is a really important point actually that, that underscores the importance of it, it being involved in research. Um, to the extent that, that you're comfortable, whether it's a drug trial or a registry like this, you know, we all walk into our doctor's offices and we, we grumble to one another in the, you've heard this, in the patient waiting room about all these bloody forms we're being made to fill out. I really hope for our audience this explains the importance of those forms. Yes, it's boring. Yes, it's <laughs> monotonous. Yes, from time to time, like even for years, your answers may be the same. But that information is so important for Absolutely. Dr. Amiri and her colleagues, as she points out so elegantly, how we look at big groups of people and how you can make generalized statements to then individual patients based on the collective. Absolutely. And I, I get all goosebumpy when I <laughs> think about the registry because it's an area, particularly pregnancy and rheumatic diseases, there's so much opportunity there. So thank you on thank behalf you. of our 40,000 members coast to coast in all of the provinces. Um, we hope that you write to us that you express interest um, if, in fact, you're someone who would like to be in, in a registry like this. Um, you're always looking for research partners and for, for interest on the part of the patient yes. community. So we really encourage you um, um, to, to let us know. I'm just going to ask our fearless producer, Anita, if we have any questions from our audience. Do you have, so the question is, do you have any lifestyle tips for anyone who's pregnant and living with arthritis? Um, so keep healthy, eat well. Um, I don't think there's anything beyond any pregnant woman that would do. Um, if you're already exercising just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you have to stop exercising. We actually encourage you to continue to do so. Um, everybody knows to lay off the <laughs> alcohol and the smoking. Yeah. Um, but exercise is important. 
regardless of whether you're pregnant or not. And just because you're pregnant, don't stop exercising. So all of those general pregnancy wellness principles, and in addition to that, close consultation with their rheumatologist Absolutely. in terms of their medicine and yeah. if there are any warning signs coming up or if it's smooth sailing through, through Absolutely. pregnancy. I guess it's just that, that added treatment piece, really. Absolutely. Yeah. And always remember, don't suffer in silence. If you have a three-month follow-up coming up but you're having a flare or something's not feeling right, communicate with your rheumatologist. Fantastic. You've heard it from the expert here uh, at Sea Arthritis. Arthritis Broadcast Network's event from the Canadian Rheumatology Association and Allied Health Professions Association annual meeting. Thank you so much Thank for joining us. Me. See, it wasn't so scary, <laughs> no, hey? <it> was <laughs> Thanks, everyone.